Little Samson still the game? There's like a whole bunch of retro games in the world that are kind of like the desired one, but why is Little Samson like the one? It's the one. Start it up. So I've been doing a lot of polls on our YouTube channel page and I consider this a really solid place to do polls when you want to poll retro people. Our show, our audience is probably like 95% retro people. We never really talk about new stuff. And I recently did a poll saying this and I quote, if you could get one of these games for free, which one would you pick? The choices were Mighty Final Fight, Little Samson, Bubble Bath Babes, Snow Bros, and DuckTales 2. Now the game that won this poll was Little Samson, and it won with a total of 50%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when comparing to so many other games, yeah, 50% is a pretty runaway victory. And I was thinking, okay, why did Little Samson win? Why does Little Samson, the real question, why does Little Samson kind of always win? Why is it always the game? Whenever we talk about video games in the retro world, it is Little Samson. Oh, what's a rare game that you want to find? Little Samson. What's a game that everyone's joking about that if you go game hunting, you want to find? It's Little Samson. I bought a complete inbox Little Samson for the NES. Is it about the value? Is that why it won? Well, if you look at the complete in-box prices of all these games, yes, Little Samson is the victor, but compared to Bubble Bath Babes, which got really low amount of votes, it's not worth that much more. So could it be the value? Well, the actual value of these games are, and again, these are complete in-box, Mighty Final Fight at $490, Little Samson at $2,753, Bubble Bath Babes at $2,246. Again, almost as much as Little Samson is worth. Snow Bros at $530, and DuckTales 2 at $396. Okay, so in the end, if we wanna say it is due to value, then yeah, you can say they're gonna pick Little Samson because technically, it is worth the most. But what if we're talking about how good the games are? Is that why people are voting for Little Samson because of how good the game is? Well, Little Samson is actually a fantastic video game. And besides Bubble Bath Babes, I mean, that game's actually kind of decent for what it is. The other games are really fun video games. Mighty Final Fight is, I think, one of the best beat-em-ups not on just the NES, but in general. Snow Bros is an exciting game, so much fun, such an underrated video game. I wish it was cheaper because more people need to be playing Snow Bros. I played it just the other day and was having a blast, and even my son was like, Dad, what game is that? That game looks awesome. And I'm like, Snow Bros. And he's like, I've never heard about it. And you talk about retro stuff all the time. And then we got DuckTales 2, which is a great game. No, it's not the original DuckTales on the NES. Yes, it is still on the NES, but it's a great game as well. So when it comes to how good the games are, are people voting for Little Samson? A little bit of mix with how good the game is? A little bit of mix with how much it's worth? I don't know, but in reality, I think it's something else. If you've been around in the retro game collecting world for any amount of time, You've probably watched the Game Chasers at one time or another. No, they're not the biggest channel on YouTube. They're not bigger than AVGN or Metal Jesus or a lot of people really, but I think they really set a precedent. And especially for retro collectors, if you're a retro video game collector, I think you have probably seen the Game Chasers at some point or not. They definitely set a standard that we didn't really have on YouTube when it comes to game collecting. And I'm not talking about, oh, they're the only retro game hunting channel that exists or ever existed or they were the first one. No, there are plenty and there are tons out there. But they were like the first, in my opinion, good production one that retro collectors kind of wanted to be like, oh, I can watch this like and replace cable. <laughs> and if you have seen them, you've probably seen their kind of staple flagship episode, and that is when they found Little Samson. Billy finds another gem. I could not believe what I was looking at. I reached in and I pulled out Little Samson. 
And weirdly, I firmly believe that while other channels were finding good games as well and big games as well, it wasn't really set as like an epic moment because of production value. A lot of times when it's more like handheld filming, different type of stuff, which I enjoy and totally watch those type of shows to this day, it doesn't really set like an epic standard of what they're finding. But the Game Chasers at the time, when they found Little Samson's, I believe kind of was coined and at that moment became the game. It is the retro game. It is the go-to game to find because it was an epic moment. There's narration. There's storytelling. No, this isn't like a Game Chasers promotion. I didn't even tell Billy I was doing this until last night. I'm like, oh, by the way, hey, I'm going to be talking about you. And he's like, oh, Dios mio, you are so nice to me. <coughs> <coughs> And with that big moment being built, I think it just kind of became a thing that was locked in our brains, almost like a weird nostalgia thing, like with certain video games. And at first I was like, does this really make sense? Is this really like a valid point or is it just me kind of rambling about what I think is going on? But in reality, I started thinking about it and even watching little old episodes of us at conventions and I'd see certain guys in the background at conventions and I'm like, I talked to that guy. I remember that vendor. I remember that reseller. I remember that fan of the show and what I've noticed and I know I'm not crazy is a lot of times I go to these guys tables and they've got expensive games everywhere games that are worth far more than little Samson they've got the rarest of rare coolest of cool things but you know what when I say to them hey what do you got over here whoa what cool rare stuff do you have nine times out of ten they would pull out little Samson look I got little Samson quick take it oh, I just really want it God. Run! because there's some sort of like pride, like I got that grail that's kind of been set in the retro world. Maybe not even if you didn't even watch the Game Chasers, we're just kind of got around like, hey, are you looking for Little Samson, Little Samson, Little Samson, Little Samson? And I feel like it just became this big thing. And that's what people are talking about. And again, like I said, when I meet people, a lot of times that's the game they want to show me, which shows me that I'm not crazy. And it is kind of just like the game. I don't know, it's just the game. It's the retro game to find. If you're able to find a copy of Little Samson, congratulations. You have one of the rarest and best games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. That also begs the question, has this happened to other video games as well? And I actually think so as well. Again, there's tons of games that have a high desirability, but I also feel like there are other games that people kind of talk about when you talk to them. They're like, hey, this is one that I want to find. This is one that I want to find. This is a grail like Flintstones Dinosaur Peak, like Action 52 games like Demon's Crest. These are games that I find when they're on certain YouTube channels where people always want to talk about them. It's kind of been set as a standard of like, hey, this is a game that we want to collect and we want to find. And it's kind of a weird thing because a lot of times with these games that we're collecting and looking for that we have such a high desirability to find, is it because the game's good? Is it because it's valuable? Sometimes yes it is, but even besides the Game Chasers thing and other people, AVGN and Metal Jesus and people like that, you ever watch a video and you watch it and all of a sudden when it's over you're like, I need to find that game. I want to find that game. I have a desire to find that game, which is almost a scary thing sometimes when we watch something and we're so easily influenced, myself included, where I watch it and within it takes 10 minutes of convincing me that that's the game I need. That's the game I want. It's a weird thing to step back and go, wait a sec. If I didn't even see this video, I would have had zero desire, zero care to find this game. So as YouTubers and really anybody, any sort of media or entertainment, this isn't a video saying, are YouTubers causing games to go up in value? No, that's not this video. I, that's, that's not my type of video. Save that for someone else. For me, it's just me saying, well, we need to be careful what we are telling people to desire, not saying video games. This is great. This is, this is amazing stuff. But you know, there's other things in the world, like why they say certain commercials are bad for like nicotine and things like that, because you know, the, the right kid watches that. He's going to walk out and be like, that looked cool. That looked epic. I need that. But obviously we're just talking about video games. Why, why do I always want to go into like trying to give some speech about making the world a better place? I texted Billy last night. I'm like, hey, I'm doing a little video talking about this. What are your thoughts? Did you know this was going to happen? Did you have any expectation of this when you filmed that video, when you found the game? Let's see what he says. I don't know. Are we responsible for the whole Little Samson thing? Like the popularity and the, you know, the whatever behind it. I don't think we're solely, solely responsible. Absolutely not. I mean, we're just small fish in the big YouTube pond. 
did it probably drive the price up a little bit? Maybe, you know, as people realized it was collectible and they wanted to get their hands on, on their version as well. Um, so I guess if you need somebody to blame, you can blame us. But I personally think that we're only like maybe 27% to blame. And the rest of it is to blame on Norm, the gaming historian. Because that, that guy made a video on it and it got like hundreds of thousands of views. So let's blame Norm. 70%. Will this happen again? That's my question. Do you guys think another video game is going to come out like this from a show maybe to where a certain channel or YouTuber or media or any sort of thing makes this the desired thing to collect? I don't know. I know there's always going to be things that are going to be big and desired again, but I feel like Little Samson just has this place that kind of isn't going to be recreated again. It's kind of run the gamut through the YouTube people of the retro scene, of the retro collecting scene especially, is like, this is the game this is the one and it's kind of locked itself in as the 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 one let me know your thoughts down in the comments below am i crazy am i out of my mind or is this pretty solid statement true stuff here and do you guys have little samson i don't have little samson but that's it enjoy you guys day have a good one make sure to subscribe subscribe follow us on social medias hit the notification bell and most importantly have a good day Yeah, explain normal.